humble. Yes. We come before you. Some of us tired, discouraged, frustrated, let down. Some of us at the end of our road. We've tried every avenue. Tried all the fads. Called every friend. Listened to all the advice. Read the scriptures. Heard the sermons. But God, we're still tired. And so God, we come to you. Yes. Because we know that you never fail. Yes. We know that you never lost a battle. Yes. We know that you have more strength than we ever could oh, imagine. Yes, Lord. And you've been just waiting on us to say, I'm tired. Yes, Lord. You've just been waiting on us to say, God, your turn. God, I need you to pick up yes. where I left off. God, I should have came to you four months ago. Should have came to you as soon as the burden became too heavy. But my pride convinced me that I can do it on my own. But on this Sunday, I rejoice knowing that I have a Savior. I have a God that lives to show his power through my weakness. The King of kings and Lord of lords. There's somebody here today that has not yet been convinced that they can't do it on their own change their minds through this service. There's somebody that is tired. God, quicken their mortal bodies. Give them hope where there's despair. Give them strength where there's weakness. Give them focus where they're scattered and walking in darkness. We know that you have the power to do it. And so we're asking that the Holy Spirit comes right now and changes someone's life. Do not, do not, do not allow them to leave this place with the burdens that they brought in, with the anger that they brought in, with the discouragement that they brought in. Let them leave it right here. Thank you, Jesus. Leave it on the altar. We give you glory for what you're already doing right now. Thank you. And we give you glory for what you're going to do at the end of the service, in this service and the previous days. Because you are God all by yourself. And we pray and move through the past, Lord. Don't so let us speak his words, but your words will give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let's go ahead and take the babies. It's tiring. Um, I found something. I want to read it to you. This guy said he's been tired. He says for a couple of years he's been blaming on iron and poor blood, lack of vitamins, dieting, and dozens of other uh, ailments. And he, says, he said he finally found out the reason why he's so tired and overwhelmed. He said the population of this country is 237 million. And he says 104 million are retired. He said that leaves 133 million to do all the work. <laughs> he says now there are 85 million in school, which leaves 48 million to do all the work. Now of these, there are 29 million employed by the federal government. This leaves 19 million to do the work. Four million are in the armed forces, which leaves 15 million to do the work. He says, take from the total the 14,800 people who work for the state and city and the government, and he said that leaves 200,000 people to do all the work. He said there are 188,000 prisoners. And that leaves 12,000 people to do all the work. Now he says there's 1,998 people currently in the hospital sick. So that leaves just two people to do all the work. <laughs> and I'm doing the sermon, so. <laughs> it feels like that sometimes that you're doing everything. You know, I, I, I made the wonderful, blessed choice to be dean of Urban Kids Camp. I'm not even head dean. I'm one of the little poor deans down here. Last year, I didn't have to do anything but show up. I don't know what changed this year, but my assignment got bumped up tremendously. And everything has gone wrong that I had to do. I had to get the buses. For some reason, the buses didn't work out. I had to scatter and do the buses last minute. Thank God for the help I had. Then I had t-shirts. I'm up. The t-shirts didn't work out. So I, and that on top of everything else that has to be done every day. And sometimes it, you just get tired. I want you to look at you this. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that everybody here has something going on where you go, is there anybody else out there doing stuff besides me? It feels that way. You know, sometimes you just get tired of tired of being broke, tired of not having a job, tired of going to the job you have, tired of driving in traffic, tired of dealing with coworkers and bosses, tired of health issues, tired of just not feeling right, tired of going from one disappointment and to a next disappointment, to one disappointing relationship, to another disappointing relationship, tired of feeling like you're the only one that cares about anything, tired of being alone, tired of being married, tired of being with your parents, tired of being a kid, tired of taking care of your kids' kids, amen? Come on now. Tired of paying for grown folks' bills, oh, come on. Come on. Yes. Tired of marriages, tired of religion, Tired of being good all the time. Tired of being bad all the time. <laughs> tired of church. And sometimes you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Yeah. You just want to wake up some days and go, this is a good day and I don't have 15 things to do today. I can just enjoy. When was the last time you just enjoyed something? Just enjoyed it, not it chased by something that has to be. I want to talk about being tired today. Because if you're tired, some of you yawning as I'm talking. <laughs> as I'm talking. <laughs> and I, I'm right there with you, honey. 
I want to look today, and I'm going to be brief because I know you're tired. <laughs> Why do we get so tired? You know, first thing, you know, sometimes we get tired of waiting. This is on a spiritual level. Sometimes you get so tired of waiting on God. I love Isaiah 57. It says, you were tired because of your road was so long. Yet, you did not say, there's no hope. You found new strength, so you did not become weak. Waiting on God, waiting on things to get better, waiting for healing, waiting for things to turn around, waiting on people to turn around, waiting on jobs, waiting on respect, waiting on healing. Sometimes you just get tired waiting on God. We don't want to say that, but if you have never got tired waiting on God, you've never waited on God. Hello. Hello. It gets tiring sometimes, trusting and waiting. I remember when I was waiting for my wife, I used to sit, I was a seminarian, and I used to sit in the library because I just knew she was going to come walking in the library. So day after day, I just sit in the library. Is that her? And I did that for a week straight, waiting on the Lord. I got him. Now finally, after a week, I snapped. <laughs> I said, God, I don't think you're showing up, or maybe we have a different timetable, but I'm going to get up and do it on my own. Have you ever gotten to the point where you're tired of waiting on God? Yeah. Tired of waiting for Mr. or Mrs. Wright and saying, Mr. Wright now will do because I'm tired. <laughs> Tired of waiting for the right job, tired of waiting for God to come through with the right house, the right circumstances, and you get to the point where you say, any circumstance is going to be better than this one? Come on. That's not true. I went and I, I decided to go out and pull out my black book and do everything that I wanted to do because I was tired of waiting. And let me tell you something right now. For those of you that are tired of waiting on God, uh, keep waiting because nothing will satisfy you but what God has it for you. It's like being thirsty and being out on an ocean and being surrounded by water. But guess what? What happens if you drink that salt water? Does it quench your thirst? No. It makes you thirstier. So when you're waiting on God, do you understand that nothing else is going to fulfill that which God has put in your heart? So you don't have any choice but to wait. I'm sorry for you. God will come through. But it's not easy to wait. But guess what? The alternative is salt water. You went and got that person that you had to have right now, and every day you wake up and go, Lord, really? <laughs> you went and had to get the job that you had to get. You didn't, you know, God told you not to get that job, but you needed money. And now you didn't know that God was trying to protect you from that egocentral, that boss that gets off on telling you what to do every day. And you go, God, really? Yes, I know you're tired of waiting, but keep on waiting. Amen? Amen. Keep on waiting on God. Now, I want us to do all that to get into our scripture today, our main scripture. I'm just going to go ahead and read it and give you. I know you're tired of something. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. Isaiah 40, 29, 31. We'll give you a break. I want you to get the scripture. I want you to, if you have your own Bible, write, circle it. Circle it. Scribble on it. That's so why I wanted you to bring your own Bible. Now, don't scribble on our Bibles. <laughs> but if you got your own Bible, please mark this. It's Isaiah. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. Talking about being tired. <laughs> being tired. Are we there? Let me read it 29. He gives strength. Now, who are we talking about? God. How many we all believe in God? Amen. He gives strength to the strong. He gives strength to those who have it together. He gives strength to, have, to those who have a good plan. He gives strength to those who have a great 401k and a great uh, bank option. He gives strength to those who have education. It says he gives strength to the weary. Amen. And increases the power of the what? The weak. The weak. Even youths grow tired and 
Spirit. And young men stumble and fall. But here's the kicker. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Amen? Amen. That is a promise from God to you. He says, my job, <laughs> the reason why I'm your father is I'm here to come alongside you, especially when you've reached the end of your rope. And what I do is I grab your feet and I suspend them just like this. <clears throat> That's my job. He gives strength to the world, weary. Now we're all going to get tired, but we shouldn't get burned out. There's a difference between being tired and being burnt out. There was a theologian that said the best ministers are tired ministers. He said the world is run by tired people. The best mothers are tired mothers. The best grandmas are tired grandmas. The best wives are tired wives. The best husbands are tired husbands. The best workers are tired. There's a difference between being tired and burnt out. We are burnt out. We're never supposed to be burnt out. Anybody ever been burnt out? Yeah. Well, you say, I'm done. I'm also got to be retirees here. Anybody ever been burnt out? <laughs> There's a difference between being tired and burnt out. If you live and you do a good job, you're going to be tired. But you still have strength. It's not because of the work. The first thing I want to think is, why do people get burnt out? It could be that we're doing the wrong kind of work. Amen? If you find yourself not moving from tired and being burnt out, it could be that you're doing something that you were never intended in the first place. Albert Einstein said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by, how, by its ability to climb a tree, it will live a whole life believing that it's stupid. I'm going to say that again when you hear that. Albert Einstein said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it's stupid. Every situation you find yourself in, God has given you the ability to over, to conquer it. The scripture says we are more than conquerors. We are over conquerors. We are super conquerors. I mean, everything we should do, you would be like LeBron going out and playing basketball at the preschool. You should, you should dunk on five-year-olds like nobody yeah. does this. This is how we're supposed to deal with life. But if LeBron is trying to do your taxes, you might have a problem. <laughs> So we have to understand that we, as children of God, need to make sure that we're doing what God has told us to do and not what we think is right. Matthew 6, 34 says, Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Right now, whose job are you doing? If you look at the, the majority of people's stress, it's not because they can't do the job that they're dealing with right now. It's because they're worrying about something tomorrow. God says, you know what? The last thing I've known, I've never met anybody that can tell the future. Anybody here? Anybody, Mr. Cleo, Ms. Cleo, that knows what's happening tomorrow? It might be. Yeah. So the reality is whenever you're worrying, you're doing somebody else's job, i.e. God's. You're not God. So do you understand if you just simply trust God for tomorrow, your stress level is going to go down immensely? Yes. If you believe that God, I'm, you're in God's will and God loves you and he has a great future for you, if you believe that, then your stress level will go down immensely. Maybe you're tired because you're worrying too much. Anybody can't get to sleep at night? Anybody talks to an attorney, looking at the clock? Knowing what time you gotta get up and go to work and you start doing that count, okay, now we, oh Lord. 
What time is that? Oh, boy. You start doing the countdown. I got four hours. I got four hours for some good sleep now. Let's not play around now. Let's get some serious sleep now. Now let that go now. And then you look up and you go, I got three hours now. And then you go, what? You get the two time out. Let's get on up. It's over. And now you're not getting sleep because why? Is it because you're not working in the bed? You're not doing your job. You're not balancing your, your, your taxes. You're not on the computer in the bed. You're supposed to be asleep. But because you can't turn off your mind, your ability to say, how can I figure out the boogeyman from tomorrow? That is not your job. So you miss out on sleep that you should be getting right now. And you get in bed for eight hours, but you wake up and you go, I'm tired. Come on. How are you tired? You ain't been working. But I've been worried. And my brain has been moving. So how do you stop to work? How do you stop worrying about tomorrow? Let God do his job and you stop doing your job. Are we following today, you guys? Yeah. 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 All right, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Let God do be God. Second, you do you. So many people are worried about what other people are going to think about them. Doing stuff for other people. And not taking care of yourself and not doing what you're supposed to be doing because you're running around trying to do everything for everybody. Oh, come on now. Lack of focus. I'm going to have to help you out there. Say focus. 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 Do what God has told you to do. For he puts their hope. For he that hopes in the Lord. For he that hopes in the Lord shall renew their strength. I do what I do because I'm trusting that God got my back. I'm doing what I'm doing because God told me to do it. If God told me to do it, he's going to pick those books up when I say I'm tired anymore. But if you're doing what your mama told you to do, or what your husband has told you to do, or you want your boss to like you, or you're scared about the economy, then the problem is you're on your own because you're doing what you want to do. Do what God tells you to do. Maybe the second reason why we're tired is we're doing the right work the wrong way. We could be doing the right work the wrong way. If anybody, if you've ever been, had a, been abused, you might have been spanked really bad as a kid, or maybe you don't know where to keep that down. Like a child abuse. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you have been raised, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you've been raised, I'm going to say, you have been find yourself tired all the time, and not tired because of work, but because of just life. I mean, just life. I mean, you're around your own kids and you're tired. You're around your, your, your mate and you're tired. You're around, you're just doing simple stuff and you find yourself tired. Let me tell you something. If you were raised in an environment where it was, you can get a whooping at any time, or maybe an environment where it's hostile and you can never calm down, what happens is, you grow up to not trust your own thoughts. You don't even trust your own mind. So what happens is everything in life is a journey that is difficult because you second guess, you third guess, you fourth guess, and just going to the grocery store is a chore because you don't trust your own thoughts and minds. And you wonder why simple relationships make you exhausted and being around people make you exhausted and, and being just doing simple tasks and you're tired and you should be at the family reunion, but now you're tired. And, and am I talking to anybody? Because just simple things, you don't trust your own mind. And so you're always trying to look at the angle of things. Yeah, waiting for the hammer to drop. Yeah, that's exhausting. That's exhausting. What is the cure? Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. God, I don't, I can't trust this. I've never been in a relationship. I've never had children. My mom beat me every day. How am I going to be a good mama? I don't know the right thing. Should I just give him candy all day? I don't know what to do. And so you have mothers who become caretakers. You have fathers who are absentee 
what they call the party bringers. All they want to do is show up and party with the children, but they never want to provide because they don't know how. They never know certain. You can't tell them anything because they already don't trust their own thoughts, and now you call them the
I'm just going to muscle through this. Muscle through this. Hey, baby, you can coast if you want. I got this. Sweat. Miserable. Drench. I paid money for this experience. <laughs> <laughs> we finally get back to the guy. He goes, hey, how you doing? I was like, hey, man. I think we got a bad one or something, man. That was hard. He said, we got a bad one? No, was it good? He said, um, boop, we had a break on the whole time. <laughs> Told me to, 
I don't need to be worried about anything else. I need to clear my mind and I need to pray. And we all we all know that prayer works when you're going through something that's hard. So what I did was pray about this situation every hour of the hour. I don't care if I was in the middle of a conversation with somebody. I would bow my head and pray about the situation and God showed up. Amen. So perhaps I just thank you for, you for giving me that advice. And when you're going through something and you're tired, you guys pray about it. Prayer helps rejuvenate the spirit also. So pray every hour of the hour. I guarantee you God will bring you through. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. He'll do it. 